But peak experiences um, for me, um, one of the things I mentioned in my video is the pinnacle of my existence, which was the birth of my daughter. My daughter is my firstborn. And, uh, you know, I had known ever since I was a child myself, I remember I started thinking about what kind of dad I wanted to be. I remember I, remember I started thinking about it when I was eight years old, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to not do as a parent and so on. And I thought about being a parent a fucking hell of a lot from the age of eight onwards because it's all I ever really wanted. It's the only thing that I ever wanted to achieve in my life uh, that, was, that actually meant a damn to me. And I wanted to be a good dad. So I spent my whole life before I was a father thinking about what I wanted to do as a father. And um, so for positive peak experiences, I think anticipation of the event is crucial. When my daughter was born, I had 20 years of anticipation going into it. And it's the most beautiful experience I've ever had in my whole life. Um, and I put my little girl in my arms, and I was there looking at her and looking into her little little baby eyes. And you know, there's a newborn baby. There's barely any trace of a personality there at all. But I looked into her eyes, and it's like the entire world vanished around me. It was just, it was like a void. There was no other people in the room. There was no room even. It was just me and my little girl in this void. And I looked at her, and I remember in the background there was like a little ding someplace in the distance. And I had the strongest overpowering emotion that we'd met each other before, and she'd come back to me, and that now I could finally give her the kind of love she deserved, and all that kind of stuff. And it was an overpowering emotional peak experience. But it was devoid of any religious connotation, you know, uh, unless you want to go off about reincarnation, but I mean, I don't actually believe in reincarnation, but that's the feeling I had at the time, and I'm not going to lie about it, or dress it up, or pretend it was something it wasn't. Anyway, um, so yeah, that was, that was the most beautiful thing that's ever happened to me in my life, and I think part of the reason it happened to me was because of all that anticipation um, and it was like the the pinnacle the apex the turning point the nexus I suppose between anticipation and reality and you get to you, you get all this anticipation which funnels into this tiny moment and then boom you get this moment and that moment is with me every single day of my life. I love my kids, both of them, so much. And, uh, you know, that kind of moment is something that helped me be the kind of dad I wanted to be. I mean, don't get me wrong, I made plenty of mistakes raising my kids, we all do, but, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty damn proud of the job I did, and I'm pretty damn proud of them, so you know, they're stunning individuals. But anyway, I digress. Uh, my point is, um, the moment itself um, changed me for the better. And it did replay itself in my head over and over and over again. It was like a positive experience of, you know, the, the, the flip side of trauma. And my experience of seeing Amma the halo is why I refer to it as a religious experience. It wasn't really a halo, though. Like I say, it was quite more like a tunnel of light that was emanating from somewhere behind her, showering past her around me. Um, it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. So let me talk to you a little bit about hallucinations now, uh, because this is something I have a, a fair amount of experience with. Um, it's no secret, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, it's no secret that I've uh, done my share of psychedelic drugs. I've also experimented with my consciousness through meditation. And uh, even before I ever did any of those things, I was 
a person with an extremely vivid imagination. I've always been able to see music if I close my eyes and listen to it, for example. I can see the geometry in music. It's kind of hard to describe, but it's there. Anyway, so my imagination is a, a pretty well functional. And one of the reasons I'm bringing up psychedelics uh, in particular is because I want to stress to you that I know a hallucination when I see one. If I'm taking some LSD or something like that, and then I said to a friend who's never done any kind of psychedelics afterwards, and I said, look, you know, I saw a dragon. It was amazing. He said, well, you didn't really see a dragon because there wasn't really a dragon in the room. I'm like, yeah, don't, duh, of course. Of course there's no dragon in the room, right? I'm, I'm not insane. But what people who've never had a psychedelic experience uh, or hallucination can't understand. I mean, if you've never been delirious because of a fever or you've never done any kind of psychedelic uh, chemicals, trust me, you don't know what it's like and you can't even imagine what it's like because you're not equipped. <laughs> Basically, you don't, you don't have the equipment. Imagination is not going to get you there. Um, if I say, uh, if, if I did some uh, psychedelic drug and then told you I saw a dragon, I'm not saying I saw a dragon in the room. I'm perfectly well aware that although the dragon appeared to be in the room, the dragon was in my mind's eye. But it looked 100% real. That's not to say I think the dragon itself is real. Seeing the dragon is a real experience. That's what I'm saying. The dragon doesn't have to be real. Your imagination, when properly employed, is immense. And our entire perception of reality takes place in here. And if your imagination is sufficiently colorful and in-depth, uh, you don't need psychedelic drugs. When your brain... I mean, the way psychedelic drugs work in the first place is they open up uh, the, the receptors in your brain um, your brain is like little sort of like I suppose they're analogous to a, a, a lock and the, the drug is like a key which opens up and it's one part of your brain connects to a different part of your brain that might not normally have those connections and that's what creates the psychedelic experience but the thing is those receptors in your brain are there they're, they're, they're redundancies that are there for a reason your body does produce chemicals that will naturally fit those receptors of course that's why they're there and there is certain states of emotional and uh, psychological events which can trigger those receptors to activate. This is my opinion. I think all of the anticipation that goes into seeing Alma, spending hours and hours watching people receive their hugs, seeing how moved they are, it kicks off an awful lot of stuff in your brain. And it's not at all surprising to me that I had a hallucination. The hallucination, as I say, didn't happen at the time. It was afterwards. Um, that's another thing I want to talk about. Perception and memory are not straightforward, and it, they're not something that you can always completely 100% trust. I mean, when you're looking straight ahead, your brain sees what's straight ahead. But when you're looking straight ahead, but you sense things off to your periphery, you can't actually see the stuff on your periphery. Your brain fills it in, based on information it's already received when it looked at it directly or whatever. It makes what you might call an educated guess at some of it. Uh, memory works the same way. Now when I saw this event around Ama, whether you want to call it a halo or a tunnel or whatever you want to call it, in my mind's eye, afterwards, when I remember it, I see that. That's because, in my opinion, that image fits the emotional response I had to the real event. That's the image. Uh, plus, you know, I've been surrounded for 51 years by uh, archetypes of uh, halos, you know, paintings with halos and so on. Uh, when, when this type of thing, we've had so much been fed to us our entire existence. You know, Ama being from India, uh, uh, Westerners tend to have, uh, well, I've certainly studied a lot of, of Hinduism and stuff, and I do have a, a fair amount of reverence for the philosophy, although I don't uh, necessarily ascribe to it all. So there's that which plays into it, there's the chemicals in the brain which play into it, there's 
the anticipation, there's the expectation, um, so many different things. There's the actual experience itself, uh, reminding me of my own mother and everything like that. Dozens and dozens of different components all factor in to why I had this experience and what it's meant to me. I mean, after I left there, uh, it renewed what I've already felt. My whole life, um, I've always felt that, uh, you know, you and me, uh, whoever you are, we are in some sense kindred. Uh, you know, if humanity traces its roots back far enough, you know, we are all of the same family. And that's true whether you ascribe to um, evolution or if you are a creationist. Either way, we all have the same heritage. And uh, so we are all kin, you know. And I've always felt that way. But most of the time it's an intellectual understanding. Whereas all of this week, every single person I encounter, I feel is my sibling. It's been a beautiful week. And I really wish I could have made this video sooner. So you might say, Paul, it was a hallucination. You were high. Uh, it was a hallucination. Uh, but naturally high is still high. I'll grant you that. But at least it was natural. And the fact that it was natural validates the experience for me. It validates my reaction to the experience. And um, I strongly recommend that if you ever have the opportunity to go and see Amma for yourself and receive a hug, that you do so. Because I'm prepared to guarantee you'll be glad you did. Thank you for watching this video. I sincerely wish you the best in life, and may all your ups and downs be ups.